What's going on, my boys? My boys? Yo, y'all dudes chilling? Yo, I'm okay. I know that last video looked real ominous, but your boy is perfectly fine. Yo, we have a lot that we need to catch up on. Then a lot of incidents have gone down in the past few days. First and foremost, I already know, niggas is waiting for that nut sack to be eaten. This nigga Shofu, he's been, he's been trying to come over to see that nut sack get consumed, my boy. But, 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 hold on a minute. You gotta give me some leeway here, man. It ain't the end of January just yet, and I still still firmly believe that we could be potentially seeing Wolf. I'm glad a lot of you didn't take that whole stance with me because then a lot of you would be losing your nutsacks too, but I already know my commitment. I mean, it's even at the point now where we have pictures of my nutsack sandwich being spread on the Miiverse. I mean, take a look at this shit. It's fucking ridiculous. And <laughs> this dude Isaiah actually showed a picture of somehow someone managed to draw in detail the way that this event would look on camera live. <laughs> <laughs> I think a show who said, I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyways, it turns out that the picture was actually done by someone who's named Jewel Score, who apparently has a reputation of doing insane pics like this on the Miiverse. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl per se, not that it matters, but she was like, just to prove it was me, to get the pictures in full detail. Anyone that is able to make a detailed picture like this in the Miiverse, I envy the shit out of you. It was all good for a laugh, and Jewel Score even says, I'm gaining a reputation of this picture is out there taking souls. It was probably Jewel Score. Hope to see more work from you in the future because this is my first time seeing one of your things. Although I probably saw a lot of your stuff beforehand, but just didn't know it was you. Very interesting. Um, by the way, I'm not sure if any of you guys are in the East Coast area with New York City and whatnot, but the weather is fucking crazy right now, man. The shit is crazy right now, dude. I think we're hitting almost blizzard conditions. I know that's 35 mile per hour winds. We're almost there, basically. Low visibility is definitely something that we're experiencing. It's a, it's basically a snow clusterfuck outside. So if you took a step out there, um, if I if I tried to take a step out there, I wouldn't even be able to do the nut sack sandwich because my nuts would get frozen off completely, and that would be a waste. So I'm not going outside. Girlfriend has supposedly had work today. She ain't going into the motherfucking job today. Hell no, my boy. Like, you see how it looks out there? So anyways, moving onward, um, if you're at home, warm and cozy with your boy Etika right now, then um, you're in a good position. So even though February is currently where a lot of the hype is expected, January has had a lot going for itself as well. A lot of NX leaks have been going down over the past week, um, some from Liam Robertson. Overall, there's a lot to expect with the NX, but we shouldn't be because that's not the way that you're supposed to approach leaks. But the leaks are there regardless, man. And we have a couple talking about how the NX is going to be running at 900p, 60 frames per second which is quite a goddamn feat, considering that might just be the minimum in terms of how games run on it, which means it's definitely going to be overpowering the PS4 and the Xbox One, since those things can barely run at 600p, 60 frames a second. I don't know, how many games are really at 60 frames on the fucking PS4? Not very many, even though that does mean that the graphic fidelity of them would have to be reduced to be able to run at that smooth of a frame rate, usually a sacrifice, either higher resolution, lower frame rate, or vice versa for the PS4 and the Xbox One, but Nintendo NX seems like it's almost at full eight HD 60 frames for every single game and you know for a fact that since the NX is going to be a console after the Wii U the graphics going to go going to look a lot better on it I'm excited about this also apparently it'll have the ability to stream 4k 60 frame per second video from Netflix and whatnot and this doesn't mean that gameplay will be a 4k we're, we're a long ways away from that but the fact that we'll be able to watch 4k video on the thing is an exciting prospect because once again PS4 and the bone can't do that this is something that a lot of you guys should be excited about. Although, if you don't have a 4K panel, it probably won't have as crazy of an effect as if you do. So, you should potentially upgrade to 4K panels if you can. I haven't because it's a lot of money still, even though the price has gone down over time. So, you can't forget that. The NX is looking like it's going to be well optimized for the future, if any of these leaks are real at least. Also, we have something of a Nintendo subscription service, which apparently is going to be able to let you play from a library of games that will constantly be switching in and out. It's awesome information, and if any of this stuff is true, I'm excited about it. The only thing, however, that I truly want from the NX is the ability to mass delete friend requests. There is no goddamn reason as to why Nintendo, at this point, with their next-gen console, should have no way to delete them all at one time. I mean, maybe they took cues from Facebook, because on Facebook, you can't delete multiple requests at one time. But I'm, I'm hoping that they move forward in that sense, because if they don't, I'm probably going to have to fucking throw myself out of a window when it comes to playing on stream, because there's no way possible to do so on the Wii U effectively if you want to battle viewers in a quick way. Come on, Nintendo. Fire Emblem also. 
recently got confirmed to be censored in some form or fashion, and the method is kind of strange but understandable from a Nintendo standpoint. It basically involves Corrin slash Kamui, the male avatar, spiking a female character's drink in a support conversation. Just that act alone, I understand why they thought it was probably best not to put that in. We do actually have some articles here which do talk about the context. Everything basically is explained in full detail as to what exactly the situation was. And when you read about it, um, without people's butchered translations or anything, it does make a bit more sense. We're not going to go into full detail about it right here, but this will all be linked in the description for you guys, so you can see for yourself just what the situation was with Corin and this female character who he actually does turn out to marry. There's apparently some homophobic undertones underneath the whole thing, but you know, Kotaku always takes things to the next level. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I've read through the whole thing myself, and if you guys want, I can give you a full opinion in another video, but I just wanted uh, to alert you guys to it right now. When we first initially saw this conversation after Fire Emblem Fates was released in Japan, we obviously saw that there was a rough translation of it, and everyone was like, uprising about the whole, you know, oh, he spiked the drink and it's making her see, uh, what is it, it's making her see guys as girls, so it's, it's, it, I, I don't know, or girls as guys, it's kind of, it's, it's a crazy situation, man, but, you know, everyone on the internet is just waiting to get offended by something, so, as soon as this had questionable ethics and morals about it, everyone was going to jump on top of it, context is a big part of a lot of these situations, but, I can understand why they didn't want niggas to spike drinks. The last thing we need Corin being associated with is fucking Bill Cosby. I'll, I'll give you that much. So now let's talk about Project X-Zone. To be honest with you guys, I know absolutely nothing about this game. It's getting a sequel, which is actually happening in February, and February in general is a really hype month to be honest with you, but X-Zone 2 is coming out. and. To be honest, I think it's in the same way as Smash Brothers because there's going to be a lot of characters from a lot of different franchises, some favorites, and some you just don't fucking know, but it'll influence you to potentially check out some other series and get privy to some cool games, which is the same thing that Smash Brothers has been known to do for a while now, and it's actually getting a demo next week. So this article, which will also be linked in the description, details how this game is going to be able to be experienced just for a little taste so you all can see the way it plays. It's not exactly fully action, but... It, it, it's, it's cool, it's kind of like turn-based and action mixed together. I'm really excited about the game, I only saw a little bit of footage from the first one, but if you dudes have seen the trailers of Project X Zone 2, they got Krom and Lucina in there, my boy. And those two, let's just say, Lucina ain't the same power level that she is in Smash Brothers in Project X Zone 2. They put a lot of her great moves in there too. So overall, I feel like X Zone 2 is something to get excited about. I want to make full detailed videos about this game as well, and you can best believe, guaranteed, I'm going to be trying this out on stream. Uh, I know there's a lot of other things I need to finish on stream, like, you know, Fire Emblem and whatnot, but I mean, those will all get done, trust me, and I know, we're cutting it kind of close with Fire Emblem. It seems like that game is not going to be finished before the next one comes out, but trust me, it will. I mean, I, everything overall had to kind of be reworked for the last few days. Um, there were a lot of things I had to handle. Like I said, my, my, my brother-in-law had to move and a lot of stuff with my mom, but we're basically back on track now. And in some other lighter news, we have some more fortune leaks. We're not going to go into full detail, but this one, um, this will be linked in the description, and it goes into how Pikmin 4 will be released on the Wii U. Um, no word on the NX release. And a lot of information here about Pikmin. Of course, take all this with a grain of salt. There's nothing to verify. The person and speaking all of this stuff is actually legit or not, but I just thought it would be funny for a read anyways. As you guys know, Fortune, you, you shouldn't you shouldn't trust anything that's said on here, although there have been some legit leaks in the past, but just know for a fact that, hey, this leak is out there, it exists, be aware of it, so maybe if it does come true in the future, potentially, you can say, oh yeah, I read that earlier. Anyways, um, moving onward, the amazing action RPG Blade and Soul came out earlier this week, and I don't know about you dudes, but I've been hyped about this for years now. I remember my girlfriend's best friend, Angel, she introduced us to it, and you know, that game looks fucking crazy, my boy. If you don't know what Blade and Soul is, it's done by NCSoft, and it's supposed to be like this crazy game which allows you to transverse the world using awesome skills. And overall, it's just a really beautiful, aesthetically pleasing game, and it's got it's action-based. That's, that's something that's big for me, too. Now, I've been trying to play the game myself, and the only thing that I've been fucking experiencing is EO 2018 errors. I... I swear to God, if any of you dudes have been playing the game smoothly without any problems like Hermzor, I will throw a fucking rusty hook directly at your fucking left testicle. Testicle! 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 I've been doing everything I could potentially to try to play this game, but the patcher just hasn't been working for me. I don't know what it is at this point, and the support on the forums is ass as well too. There have been so many threads that have been addressing this problem overall so many times, and yet no mods 
no kind of assistance, nothing. And they say something about Razer support being the issue as to why certain people can't load up the client or why I can't finish patching. But I don't have anything Razer on my computer besides Razer comms. I disabled that a long time ago. They're saying something with Asus programs as well too. I have an Asus motherboard. Like what the fuck do you expect from me? But I don't have any Asus programs installed per se. I don't know what's going on with the patcher or the client. But because of it fucking up, I'm not able to experience this game. Let me know in the comments if you've been playing Blade and Soul, if it actually meets your expectations, and just how much I'm missing out on. Maybe we'll potentially if I do get this thing working, we could be doing something on stream. I could be playing with you dudes. But for now, we're pretty much fucked up the ass with this. So moving onward. I done told you niggas that when I when I when I'm when I'm on a little bit of a hiatus, I usually get shit done. This is my old capture card, the Aver Media Live Gamer HD. This thing stopped working on me. Aver Media kind of became crap over the years. I mean, they, they got some good products. Uh, they, they really hit it well with the Live Gamer Portable. I think that was them at their peak. But this thing, nah, it's not doing the job. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was something on my computer, but for a while now, the audio has been messed up. And trust me, I know tech support. I, I, I've done everything possible. The tech support on Aver Media with this whole thing kind of sucks, too. No one was ever able to really help me out with it. So, goodbye. We have... a motherfucking Elgato Live Gamer HD Pro Live Gamer HD 60 Pro. This is going to be the new capture card that I use. I've already installed it on my computer, so we don't have any problems with this one. Everything works perfectly fine. It seems like there was just some kind of fucked up thing with the Aver Media program. I think after a certain update on Windows 10, something fucked up. And so Anyways, this one is actually overall better as well too because it has 1080p 60 frames, whereas the Live Gamer HD, which I just chucked, can only go up to 720p 60 frames per second. If you go to 1080p, it's only 30 frames. And no one plays games online if they're 30 frames, um, unless the game is throttled to play at 30 frames. You know, if it's 60 frames that you play on the console, then you, you gotta make sure that it looks 60 frames on the PC or on your, all your videos, your streams, or else it's gonna look horrible. Anyways, guys, so with this in tow, we should be able to finally get back to playing my Wii U games. I want to play some Bayonetta, um, some Xenoblade Chronicles X, and other things like that. I'm happy about that upgrade. So February seems like it's going to be a hype period for a lot of things. Smash Brothers, Fire Emblem Fates, we have um, Project X Zone 2. Um, there's, there's a lot of great things happening in February, along with my nuts being lost. But, dudes, in terms of the DLC, I found it a little bit strange that on the actual Smash Brothers official website, let's take a look really quick. I just want to show you something and see if I'm the only one that finds this strange. But we know for a fact that Bayonetta was supposed to be coming with the Umbra Clock Tower stage, and I expressed how amazing I think that stage is, and how it could potentially be legal if those background entities don't attack, which we have not seen them do yet. In terms of the solid platforms that pass through the stage, maybe that's debatable, but for the most part, we know for a fact, at least, that we're going to get that stage as DLC, but for some reason, it's not listed here. We still don't have a date for Corrin or Bayonetta, so no, we don't, sadly, that's not something that we can talk about right now, but I'm, I'm guessing probably by February 15th, maybe, but it, 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 I, I think February 15th makes a lot of sense. We don't have Umber Clock Tower listed here, even though there were other stages with other characters that were given to us as well. It says Cloud and Midgar stage. Ryu and Suzaku Castle, where's Bayonetta and Umber Clock Tower? Maybe it's just a mistake or an oversight on their part, or maybe I'm reading into this way too much, but for the fact that we don't see that stage listed here, it's a little bit strange. I don't know. If they can't list one piece of DLC, then maybe they can't list another one. And even if we go to stages, <laughs> you don't see Umber Clock Tower at all here. I know, at this point now, it seems like I'm just reaching for anything to potentially preserve my tender nutsack, but we don't have the clock tower, so maybe this, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Draw whatever conclusion that you will from that shit, but I get excited about it when I see it. I mean, anything that seems a little bit off in Smash Brothers, there's so many signs that us as fans and, and you know, viewers of Smash Brothers stuff, there's so many signs that we want to pick up on that we know are probably bullshit at the end of the day, but we still pursue it anyways because it's fun, it's interesting, and it gives us something to do with our time. Hey. Whatever. But anyways, a lot of you dudes have also been clowning me. Oh, Etika's channel's dead. There's no more Smash Bros. Like, obviously that's not the case, my boy. My channel has never been better. To be honest with you, these are the biggest numbers that I've ever been pulling in the entire history of my channel, actually. We average pretty much 100,000 views on each and every single video, minus a couple that I didn't post at the right time. By the way, if you haven't seen my Corrin analysis, go check it out because I posted this super late night. 
So a lot of you guys are usually watching the daytime or not able to see it and add it to your watch later cues or whatever. So go check out my corn analysis. I put a lot of work into that. You guys should definitely see it if you haven't. A lot of my videos have been pulling in insane amounts of views and I can only say thank you to all of you dudes who have been keeping up with me over this time. It's insane to see that we've hit a truly solid average of 100,000 views per video and who knows, maybe that can go up or down, but regardless, the fact that it could even reach that number for a certain amount of time, it's insane and I just need to tell you a big thank you and a big appreciation for all that stuff from you guys. I can't express it any more or any greater than that, you know, um, but I will, I will. I'll find greater ways to repay you dudes for everything that you've done for me to help me change my life and even though things ain't perfect, like with everyone's life, they're a lot better than what they could be, that's for sure. Also in terms of random stuff, we have Xcoon Howl who showed me this pretty funny picture of me actually being in Fire Emblem, putting some moves on uh, Lin here, who's, Lin's kind of a bad girl, man. I can see why people want her in the game. And then we also have an article here which shows Hyrule Temple as a playable character in Smash Brothers. It's just as confusing to you as it is to me right now, but it is pretty funny for the image gallery that they have going on. What the fuck is the deal, man? <laughs> Why would you do this? Why the fuck would you do this, man? I mean, come on. It's an iconic level, and we all know this level. We all love this level. Back when we used to play the casual days, um, like I still do, we'd be fucking up our friends here, especially when you go to the under part of the stage. But I mean, come on, man. Why would you make the stage into a character? Who does it play as? Like, we don't have any video footage. At least I couldn't find any. So if you guys have any video, let me know in the comments. That is basically it for the hype report. Um, this is not going to be a section that I constantly do. I'm still experimenting with a lot of things on my channel as usual because we are always in a state of growth, development, and new discovery. So hey, I'm trying out some new shit. Rather than do a bunch of videos on these topics, I compress them all, which means obviously I'm not gonna be able to put as much of a spotlight on each individual one, but I feel like maybe this will be a format that you guys like. If you haven't been able to catch my streams lately, I'll make a video for you guys to let you know what you can do. I'm just happy to have my German viewers able to watch me now. I'll talk to you dudes in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.